Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director David Riggleman. Coming up on this show, our community comes together for National Recovery Month to increase awareness of mental health and addiction recovery. And we show you how easy it is to adopt that perfect pet. <laughs> Here to discuss these topics and a whole lot more is the councilwoman who represents Ward 2. You know who it is, Victoria Seaman. Welcome back. How are you? Great to be here. Here we are well into the fall all of a sudden. Wow, where is this year right gone? Right around the corner from I Christmas. Know, I know. It's, 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 I don't the know holidays are knocking on the door here. So It went from hot to holiday. <laughs> it did. It always does. We go from sweltering to, ooh, man, I need to, I need to put a sweater on all of a sudden or put a sweater on. In one day. On. I know. Yeah, that's Las Vegas. So. Yeah. Well, Councilwoman, uh, we both reside in Ward 2. Uh, this is the area you represent, and uh, we know the area pretty well. You especially mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you out there not exactly sure where Ward 2 is located, well, don't worry. We're going to show you where it is on the map because this is the area that we're primarily going to be talking about today. It's basically the area in orange there that's west of the Rainbow Curve. If you live in that area or work in that area, then you're in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. And if you're a resident out there, uh, then you are represented on the city council by Victoria Seaman. I'm always amazed at that whole area out west of the 215. That That is a hot... It's growing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I just can only imagine it in 10 years. I it's going to be completely full of homes and stores and... It's going to look completely different yep. because they're building like crazy. There. Yeah, and it's just uh, just a beautiful area of town. It you're, is. you're up uh, as you're heading up the mountain there, and so the, the views back down into the valley are just gorgeous from up it's there. Beautiful. So it it's beautiful. It's a little cooler <laughs> than the rest of it the is. valley. It, it is. Uh, exactly, yeah. even in the hottest of times. Yes. So. Well, we have a lot to talk about today. I love these first two topics. Um, you posted this on Facebook. You said, Councilman Brian Knutson and I had the privilege of presenting a proclamation to Students Against Substance Abuse, recognizing October 10th, 2022, as Students Against Substance Abuse Day. Now, this has been a passion of yours, really since you've been on the City Council, about raising awareness uh, and, and any, I think at the same time, tolerance of people who are struggling with with addiction. Yeah, and getting rid of the stigma. Yeah. Because I know yeah. so many great people that, well, first of all, you know, we have so many people that have addiction problems. Yeah. Everybody's family or friend, somebody knows someone who's also died of an overdose. Yeah. And if we don't stop the stigma and start finding solutions, we're going to lose a lot more people that we know. And it, so it's so important for me to bring awareness and to offer solutions rather right. than judgment. Right. And right. what You've I... You've often said that. That's a great way to phrase yeah. it. Yeah. And so I'm so grateful to Councilman Knutson because um, this was really something he was involved with and he... Um, asked me to join him in doing this. He because he knows, yeah, you, yeah, you have, you have a, a very strong connection with always wanting to help this group. Also, too, uh, Councilwoman, I think, to uh, mental health awareness, that's kind of in the same boat where you've tried to raise the awareness that it, it, there's no stigma. If you're struggling, look for solutions. I love how you said that versus um, judgment. Right, and a lot of um, people who have mental illness take drugs to mask yeah. it. Yeah. And so we're not seeing the underlying problem and we're judging people who are on addic who are addicted instead of saying why are mm -hmm. they in this situation. And then once they get addicted, it's a really hard cycle to break. Yeah, sure. And then, you know, uh, for them to get off the drugs is so it, it takes it takes a lot, so yep. we need to be helping. Yeah, and so that's why it's so important. Councilwoman, I mean, you always have talked about that too, um, where the resources are, how to find the resources, mm -hmm. what to do. Do you have any thoughts on what you could share here? If someone they know someone who's maybe struggling, maybe they're struggling themselves. Where's a good place to begin? Foundation for Recovery is a good place to go see. Um, there are other places. There's a new place called Vegas Stronger that I. Yeah, we're going to talk about them. Yeah, yeah we're going to yeah. talk about them. And, and also, you know, call our office yep. and we'll yep. help you find places. I was say you. Um, you can always call us and we'll try to find you the help that you Point need. You in the right direction. Um, I know that um, there are just so many places, but a lot of people don't know about that. Yeah, and, and, to, and to your point, I think they're afraid that people are going to think less of me. I'm going to be judged. Uh, it's going to be uh, up here as a sign of weakness if I step forward and say, hey, listen, I'm really struggling. No, we my... think it's a sign of strength that you really want help 
and that you're willing to get help. And like I said, you can call my office because I have a heart for this. Yep. And I know um, that people are struggling and we just want to help them. Yep. No judgment here. Yep. Yeah, well said. Of course, before the end of the program, we always give out the Councilwoman's contact information, so we will share that with you again. Maybe you're interested in finding out a little bit more. She or her great staff will, will help point you in, in the right direction for sure. Well, speaking of Vegas Stronger, uh, you mentioned them. You posted this on Facebook. You said, great day today with my friends Joe and Ryan touring Vegas Stronger. Thanks for everything you're doing in the community. And Councilwoman, you touched on this, but tell everybody, what does Vegas Stronger do exactly? It's, it's that place where those who need help or want help can actually get help. So. Um, these are a couple of friends of mine, Ryan and Joe. Joe here does their, um, you know, healthy, better lifestyles, uh, helps to train people. But this place is the first step that you can go. If you have addiction if issues. If you have addiction yep. issues, and they will um, help you with treatment, um, helping you to get help for treatment. Um, and they actually go out into the community and bring people who need help. Yep. So it's, it's amazing. We see a lot of places popping up that are willing to help people who have problems with addiction. And I think it's great. I think anytime we can get a, a nonprofit that's willing to go out and help people and get them off the street and help them to better their life is, is great. So I was so happy to yeah. tour it. They, uh, they're located uh, off of Bonanza, I think you were saying, more in the yep. downtown area, but they help people all over all the over. Valley. Yeah. So you all don't over. have to be from downtown to oh, get no. them up, obviously. So. Anywhere. Well, good luck to them and uh, keep up the good work, gentlemen, for the work you're doing. And then uh, you also posted this on Facebook. You said, it was a pleasure to attend the Art Affair of the Year fundraiser to benefit the REACH 702 Foundation. And tell us about REACH 702. There you are. There's the big sign, REACH 702. Obviously, um, they, they're uh, getting their word out. And explain what they do, Councilman. Well, these actually, this uh, organization there, you see Judge uh, Kearns Senator there. Kearns, yeah. Um, the, this organization actually raises money for the specialty courts that we uh -huh. have here at the city of Las Vegas, which are amazing. And uh, one of the uh, persons that heads this organization, a friend of mine, pastor, um, a pastor, and it's just great that they're going out there in the community and raising money for our courts. Yeah, uh, the courts, especially courts, Councilwoman, we can explain we a little veteran, bit. Yeah, yeah. What, no, wait, we have... Um, women in Need. Women in Need. Uh, we yo, have Youth Offender. Youth Offender, uh -huh. which is Judge yeah. Kearns. Uh, uh, we have the Veterans Court. Veterans Court. Uh, uh, folks, these are people typically within these different groups who uh, have repeat offenses where they will come back to court over and over again on, on various charges, often drug related. Um, uh, it can be a variety of things, but the idea with the Specialty Courts Council, right. explain it, a little bit, is, is to prevent people from, instead of just throwing them in jail again, yeah. is to help break that cycle. Yeah, of, break the cycle so they don't keep coming back and offended. getting incarcerated, mm -hmm. and so that they can lead a normal life. But it's, again, it's like a vicious cycle. Mm -hmm. And so I love that we do this, and I know that we are like a model across the country with our courts um, because we're helping so many people, so many women, so, so many um, youth offenders, mm -hmm. and like you said, the Veterans Court. So um, great things happening in this city. Yeah, we also have a uh, traffic court uh, for people who will keep offending, getting moving violations. Uh, again, the idea is it's like, let's break that cycle of a call of recidivism where you're back in the court again, back in the court again. And uh, Councilman, to your point, our courts now are, are the model for, for courts all across the country to do the same thing. You've attended, I know you've been to some of the Women in Need oh, court yes. graduations oh, yes. and yes. Uh, participated firsthand in, in helping those, those ladies get on the right track. Maybe they've been in trouble with the law multiple times and, and to... And it's amazing to hear their stories. Yeah, how they've turned their lives how around. How they've yeah. turned their lives around. And a lot of them have children. Mm -hmm. So it just benefits the community more than anything yeah. that we get these people that can get their life on track and help them as much as we can. Same as addiction. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, we, we've learned that, the, that we need to step up yep. and find solutions rather than incarcerate. Yeah. 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 And yeah. I love that we do that. Yeah. Um, because otherwise it's just a revolving door for those folks. And it's not yep. good for them and it's not good for the community. Exactly right. Exactly right. No question about it. Well, Reach 702 Foundation, thank you so much for the work you're doing and thank you for supporting our specialty courts uh, here at the Municipal uh, Court at the uh, City of Las Vegas. Appreciate that. 
And then, Councilwoman, you're just all over the place. Uh, back on October 10th, you were at the International Intellectual Property Law Association Conference. You welcomed these folks. You were one of the speakers there <laughs> as they came into town. And uh, you'll have to tell everybody, uh, you know, what does the intellectual property group do? Exactly that. <laughs> They're looking for solutions for intellectual yeah, yeah. property because billions of dollars are lost because of intellectual property. And it was just great to be able to welcome people back to Las Vegas to have conferences here. Yeah. A much needed uh, conference to talk about intellectual property, especially with tech. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah websites you know you have um, there's so much more now with intellectual property than we realize oh absolutely the, the whole thing with nfts non-fungible uh, uh, transactions mm -hmm. where uh, you, you can own a painting uh, virtually basically um, exactly and it's 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 a, it's a whole new world so, so we're moving fast yeah. and these groups have to move just as fast yeah it, it, it's 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 uh, it's incredible well glad they came to town and I'm glad you had an opportunity to welcome <laughs> them thank you for bringing your conference back here it's been we yes. had a dry spell there for a while oh, we during did. the pandemic and now they're yeah. coming back and yeah. they're enjoying themselves and it's just great to see that in our city yeah, again. It sure is. Sure mm -hmm. is. Uh, good to see. It's uh, so good for our economy here. Councilwoman, it's hard to believe, but it's been five years since uh, the October 1 shooting that took place uh, down on the South Strip. And uh, once again this past year, uh, we remembered uh, those we lost. Um, with our special ceremony at the Healing Garden uh, in the city of Las Vegas. Downtown. And it's so special because it allows those people who lost a loved one to come somewhere yep. and, re and and they're, you know, with the garden and mm. really know that people care and that in the middle of the night we're reading off the names yeah. of those who perished. And um, we need to do this forever. This is such a, a good thing that we do to remember those who lost their lives. Yeah, it's, it's really a very emotional evening. Uh, we read the names at the same time that the shots first rang out, 10.05, and uh, read the names of, of, of all the 58 that, that died that night. And uh, the, the thing that's really hard is that so many of the families return. Many of the, those that were killed were from California, uh, so their families come back each year. Canada. Uh, Canada as well. I've seen And, and they folks arrive, from they, they do, they, they, come, they come as well. And um, after even after five years, uh, obviously the grief is still very strong. The grief is going to be there uh, for a long time, uh, and it's so wonderful that we at the city um, do this every year for them. Yeah. Uh, you can see uh, for after each name is read, uh, a bell is tolled, uh, and then a candle lit. And uh, again. There are 58 trees in the garden for the 58 that we lost that night. With so many memories yeah. about that person, you can kind of walk through that garden and know a little bit about that person. That is so true. That is so I true. I love that garden. It's so special. It is. It is. And you know, Councilwoman, it's funny you say that because in the five years the garden has been there, I don't think it's ever looked any better than it does right now. It's absolutely so immaculately kept. Uh, a lot of volunteers help, and the trees have matured. So between the, the, the canopy of the trees now and just the meticulous maintenance that has gone on, the, the place just, uh, it's never looked any better than it does now. Uh, we should probably mention, for people that don't know, uh, the shooting happened on a Sunday evening, and then within just a few days, five days after the shooting, volunteers, at, you know, working with the city of Las Vegas, we provided the land, a vacant lot near the downtown, uh, near uh, Casino Center in Charleston, and volunteers did all the work to build the garden. We dedicated it on Friday night, the following Friday after the shooting. So people wanted to help. They wanted to do something uh, to express their grief and to express their support for the community. This is one of the things that, that occurred almost practically spontaneously and all these years later, it's now become a focal point where people still remember. Those and they'll come back every year. Yeah, yeah. So uh, hopefully we will never have another event like that in our city or anywhere else. Uh, very hard, but I'm glad that we're still remembering, to your point, that we're still remembering those that we lost. So, And then, Councilwoman, uh, 
Shifting gears here a little bit, you posted this on Facebook. You said, I want to congratulate the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department for a successful National Night Out event. This is always a great event. This particular one, they happen all over the valley, but this one that you were at was in um, downtown, downtown Summerlin. Summerlin yeah, with yeah. The, it was the Summerlin Command that came out to this one and Spring Valley. So I saw both captains there. And uh, yeah, like you said, they do it all over the city. But this one happened in downtown Summerlin. And what I love about it, it's the our metro going out and just interacting with the community. Uh -huh. And it's such a great event. And, you know, our metro, uh, again, can be a model for the entire country of how they reach out to the public and the relationship that they have. Yeah, that, uh, that community-oriented policing, I think they call it, uh, makes a huge difference because, uh, difference because you build that relationship with the community before there's some incident. Right. And uh, Metro has used that very effectively for years and years and years. Years, yes. Yeah. Through events like this, yeah. you get to meet the police officers who patrol the area. You can talk to them about issues. You can talk to them about a variety of things. And it kind of creates that bond between the community and the police. And versus, they reach out to all yeah. all of the community, minorities, different religions, yep, yep. and have so many special events. So they're interacting with everyone. Yep, yep. And it's very special. Well, you were out there supporting it too. And I know she brought your uh, your guard dog out there with I you. I did, so. <laughs> my little Frenchie, who loves Metro. <laughs> <laughs> Looked like he was having a good event too oh, there. Yeah. So very oh, yeah. good. Um, Councilman, we should mention that uh, that event, that National Night Out, generally around the country, it's the first Tuesday in August, typically in many cities, but here in the hot parts of the country, we also do it in October because... It's and I hope we continue it, yeah, to do it. it's pretty hot in August, uh, the first the uh, yes, Tuesday in yes. August, generally. The, yeah. My little Frenchie wouldn't have made yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Too so hot for we him. do it the first uh, yeah. Tuesday in... It's perfect weather. ...in October, yeah. Perfect and, uh, weather. That started out as National uh, Leave the Light On Night, uh, where you the idea was you were supposed to leave your porch light on to let the bad guys in the neighborhood know that, hey, all the neighbors are all watching each other and looking out for one another. That's evolved into National Night Out, um, which is kind of the, the police and the community coming together as we saw in downtown Summerlin. So. I didn't know that. Thank yeah, you for thank you for telling me. Pretty cool me. though, but look that what is it's very cool. Look, look what, what it's it, evolved to. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good stuff. So, Councilwoman, you are like all over the place. Downtown Summerlin, Washington, D.C., September 22nd. <laughs> uh, you and I and Dave McGowan on your staff, you guys were back in Washington, D.C. for the the, the D.C. fly-in. You'll have to explain that. The chamber fly-in. Yeah, so every yeah. year, um, the Las Vegas chamber brings uh, a lot of people together. And we, we go to D.C. and network with um, the lawmakers, yeah. lawmakers yeah. everyone. That it, it, It's such a great event because you really do get to know the Washington, D.C. folks that maybe work on some of our issues here at the city. Mm -hmm. right, and it's, right. it's, it's, it's much better when you meet them in person and you're able to speak yeah. with them. And it's also nice, as you see, when some of our city folks. The, yeah, Zach there uh, was on the right, and Zach Butcher, and then uh, 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 Booker, and then in the middle, that was Dave McGowan yeah. and other stuff. Yeah, and just bringing the delegation together to meet with the congressional delegation right. to work on issues that we have, whether it be BLM or what have you. It's just always nice to kind of yeah. network in person so now you know who you're, you're talking yeah. with and uh, you know, it's 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 a great event. And everyone hears directly, the, the, the lawmakers in D.C. can hear directly from the folks in Las Vegas. These are some of the things that we need. These are some ways you could help us out. Um, and it's like you say, that face-to-face that -face interaction, uh, developing those relationships. Yeah, yeah and, some, and some very great uh, different uh, meetings that they hold yeah. um, to hear from congressional leaders. So it was, it was really yeah, nice. Well, it was my you. first one. They do it every year. Uh -huh, right. So I was really glad that I got to attend this good year. Good for you. Good for you. It's a it's a pretty large delegation from Nevada. We had about two hundred yeah. over two hundred people yeah. this time. It was the biggest one yeah. this year than they've had in the past. And uh, you know, I guess I guess people are hearing about it and wanting to finally go, yeah. like myself. Yeah, that's great. Well, thanks for supporting us <laughs> outside of the city council chambers too. That's great. We want to talk about art in the park that took place back on October sixteenth. 
Very successful Very event. Successful. Bruce Trent Park. We will be doing it again in the spring. So stay tuned. We'll be putting out flyers and we hope to get more artists and more people attending. Yeah. Art in the Park, you guys, uh, is right there. Bruce Trent Park is right at Vegas and Rampart. Uh, and very well attended. Perfect time of the year to do it. The weather was gorgeous back. We on only a, do it when the weather's yeah, gorgeous. October so it's 16th. October and in the spring. Yeah. And jazz music, food yeah. trucks. It was absolutely wonderful. Yeah, here's, here's a little flavor. Don't miss it next time. Yeah. Uh, a lot of nice shade trees out there, as you can see at Bruce Trent Park. And so, yeah, vendors have got their stuff set up. You can go check out the different kinds of art, get something to eat. Uh, listen to the music. It, it's fun. It's a, it's a really fun event. And uh, now, in conjunction, I, I, I assuming I'm assuming that also you had the Growloween event. Was that around the that same was, time? That was that was the next the, the day. Next day. And we really we support that. Uh, Three Dog Bakery puts it on, ah. and we support that with them. And <laughs> they bring out all the their animals in costume, and they're so adorable. And it's a great event. Right. And I, that, that was the next day. They actually came by our event to kind of... Kind of promote it a little bit. Well, yeah. promote it and see where they wanted to position oh, everything. Very good. And they had a very successful yeah. event the next day. That's awesome. You know, I've got to tell you, Councilwoman, the Art in the Park event was a home run this year because the people were parked all around uh, it, it was it was a well attended event yes it you was know, and, uh, we, we've had it's been big in the past but I, this has got to be the biggest year we've yeah, ever had yeah we, we want it to be even bigger yeah it, it, we have the capability of making it even bigger, but I think every year people start talking about it, it will become yeah. much bigger. Yeah, exactly. It'll but become a, a lot tradition. of fun. It's just, you know, bringing community together. And Bruce Trent Park, now that we've given it an uplift, I mean, we're it's being utilized yeah, quite a bit. Yeah, it sure is. And it it's sure a is. great park. It's a beautiful park. It is. It's in great yeah. shape, and uh, just it's just a great location. And there were, ki there were so many kids in the playground. Yeah, yeah which people, we've redone. Yeah, yeah, we did that. And so not only did you have the the art fair going on, but you also had a lot of parents yeah, with their children. Yeah, having fun. The, yeah. Great locations, right off Summerlin Parkway, just north of the parkway, uh, if you get off at uh, Rampart and... Vegas and Rampart. Yeah, it's right there, boom, you're, you're right there. So, okay, so everybody's like, oh man, I missed it. Well, don't worry, because she has other events coming up <laughs> that we're gonna tell you about. You have a shredding event, document shredding event, that happened on uh, November 12th. That's correct. This is gonna be at the Pavilion Center Pool parking lot. You know, all those old tax forms or bank forms or other... You, you know, know, these are well attended. They even are. though they are. people, you would think people are starting to put things on a computer or, or a drive, but I got to tell you, it's still very well attended because we're doing the medication disposal and as that's well. That's always great, too. If you got old meds, don't throw them down the toilet or into the trash. Uh, bring them out to these events. They'll be disposed of properly. But... Uh, Councilwoman, this is going to be at the Pavilion Center Pool, as we said, Correct. from 10 to noon on Saturday, November 12th. And again, uh, don't be a victim of identity theft. You got those old things laying around. You got your personal information on it. Just bring it to one of these events, and, and we'll dispose of it. And I mean, they really, they really pulverized that. The, oh yeah. The, the paper shredded into like you confetti. Can't, you yeah, can't tape it yeah, together like no, the ones you have at your yeah, home. Yeah, exactly. That kind it's, of shred. And no, it's this, this is this, impossible. This is totally different. Yeah. So, and you got those meds too, as Councilwoman said. Bring them out. You can get rid of those as well safely. So, and then Councilwoman, we want to remember, uh, remind everyone every, uh, out there that every Tuesday you do your adopt a pet segment, right? Oh yes, and we are so excited about. There's so many people that write me and say, how do how do we <laughs> adopt that cat or pet? Um, so it's really important that we get the word out. This, we're doing them from the Nevada SPCA right now. And it's cats, dogs, they have rabbits, they have guinea pigs. Don't go buy a guinea pig at a pet store. There's like so many that oh, need yeah, a home. exactly. And this, this beautiful dog is a little bit older and they need homes. Yeah. Look at this rabbit. This rabbit is beautiful. And that cat. And look at the size of that cat. <laughs> that's a bobcat. Just kidding. Yeah, yeah. That's Lori Heron uh, there holding that cat. Yeah. And I mean, Lori is not a teeny person. And uh, that cat <laughs> makes her look like that she is. So I know. Um, and they're healthy, beautiful cats. And, you know, this is the place to go to get your animals. Yeah. Any place. Any shelter, you know, we yeah. Animal Foundation, Nevada SPCA, 
we really want people to adopt. Yeah. You always say, don't shop, adopt, you know, because yeah. there's so many animals out there that, that need a home. Yeah. So on Tuesday, Councilwoman is going to feature some of these animals so that every you, Tuesday, yeah, every Tuesday, so that you can see these animals. And if maybe there's one catches your eye and, and uh, you can give it a, a, a perfect home. And then a Councilwoman also too. I love this segment. You're going to continue doing your Small Business Saturday segment, and this is where you highlight businesses of all types that are in War II. That's correct. So every Saturday you'll see some business being featured that either they do the work in War II or they're in War II. And we want to continue that. So if somebody has a small business or you know someone, just have them contact our office, and we are happy to come out film it and feature it yeah. and it's really successful because like you said um, there were so many businesses that you didn't know about exactly and now you do and the same with me it's like I didn't know that place was right down right. the street and um, now we're going you know we're, we're shopping at local places and it's it's really wonderful well you've turned me on to so many places through that segment that I had absolutely no idea that were literally you know within a couple miles of the house and uh, it's great. So if you uh, own a small business you, and you're in War II, you want to be featured, hey, we want to hear from you, call 702-229-2420. Or uh, if you want to learn about what's going on in that neck of the woods, then just tune in uh, to her Small Business Saturday segments. You, you have, she has them on her social media platforms. You are always going to learn something that you didn't know. And uh, I've, I've really enjoyed that segment. Um, it's like I say, had no idea that these places were uh, so close to me. So yeah. thanks for doing it. You're welcome. <laughs> well, Councilman, we are about out of time. The half hour always goes quickly, uh, but we want to tell everybody out there, hey, we always want to hear from you. So if there's something you'd like to share with Councilwoman Victoria Seaman, you can find her on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. She's very active. You can also contact the Councilwoman by just picking up the phone. We do that, 702-229-2420, or send her an email. Her address is ward2 at lasvegasnevada.gov, and she or one of her great staff will get right back to you, as you always do. Well, nice work. We'll have you back in six weeks with another update from ward2. It, it'll be, I will be well into the holidays by then. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. So, um, and there's a lot going on during <laughs> the holidays. So, yes. Exactly right. Looking forward to it anyway. Thank you so much. And thank uh, you. everybody out there, don't miss our next show beginning on November 10th with Ward 5 City Councilman Cedric Creer. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And also watch for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to download and subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can also watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next time around.